Hey everybody, JJ here, back again for another Wednesday of Zoom Networking. Uh, today, boy, we've got a guy on who's so smart. He's not just good looking, but he's smart too. Amazing young man out of Sub2, Pace Morby Sub2 community. If you've been on my calls before, you've heard me talk about Pace. He's a premier genius in the country, which means the world as far as creative finance and real estate goes. His Sub2 community is unparalleled as the best real estate education community in the country and in the world. The young man we have today started as a, you know, a student and um, became an investor, an entrepreneur, and now is just a rocket science genius killing it with, amongst other things, AI. Um, I'd like to introduce my good friend, Mr. Justin Lee. Justin, how are you, my friend? Doing well, JJ. Thanks for having me on. Hey, man, it's a pleasure. I really enjoyed our conversation the other day. And man, you just tend to, bl you keep blowing me away with all the great value that you bring. I know you're going to bring some great stuff today. Um, really quick, for those that don't know you, where in the country are you located? I'm in a little town called Yanceyville, North Carolina. Man, that sounds beautiful. I hear the East Coast is getting battered with some pretty serious storm conditions right now. Uh, not too bad. It's just cold. There you go. Too. Yeah. We're, it's pretty cold out here in California, too. We were, we got down below 70 the other day. We had to grab a sweater. Now, in all honesty, it's getting closer to the 50s and 40s, but it's still probably a little warmer than most of the country right now. Hey, you know, I wanted to talk about how you got started in real estate. You know, we all get a different start at a different time. Um, some of us as early as our teens, but from our teens, we're driving at 16, we're voting at 18. We are, you know, combined alcoholic beverage at 21. From those years for yourself, from your teens into your 20s, was real estate even an option for you? Was like mom and, and agent and dad a contractor uh, or was it not at all on the horizon? What was your, did you get introduced to it early? Or were you introduced to it later? And if it was later, what were you doing in your teens and your twenties that, that preceded the, 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 the next chapter? Yeah. So not at all. So real estate was not in, in my forte at all. Um, I was actually, uh, on my own at age 13 and uh, pretty much uh, took care of myself, full-time job, uh, joined the Marine Corps. And then I got into real estate later on in life, uh, much later on. So back in 08 is when I first got into real estate and it's been up and down since then. And we went uh, full force real estate about, uh, about almost five years ago now. Well, let, let me ask you now. So you, out of high school, you went into the military. What what branch of the military were you in? I was a Marine Corps, joined when I was 17. Very cool. Very cool. And, and as they say, thank you for your service. Um, yeah. When you got out of the military, how long were you in? Were you in for four years, eight years? Did you go for longer term? Or what was your duration for with the with, with the Marines? Yep, I was, I was in four years. I was only in state probably six months out of that four years. Um, got to do a lot of cool stuff. A lot of a lot of neat places I went to. Um, construction's kind of been my forte everywhere, even in the military. And so when I got out of the military, I started my own construction business. Okay, doing high end remodels in Texas, um, in the DFW area to be uh, specific. And then I sold that business and started another business. Okay, and then so how long were you doing construction before you decided to make that move into uh, real estate? Um, all in all, almost 15 years, um, okay. all in. Um, so I started my first construction business in 13 and when I was 13 and, uh, I, I sold the, the final end product, uh, in 2009. Okay. And, um, was it something that gradually came about or were things just showing up or were people saying, Hey, look at this. I mean, was it something that you were just kind of postponing or did just all of a sudden, you know, what, what, what was it? Bigger pockets? Was it an internet advertisement? What was, what, what, what got yeah. you to make that move? So, so a lot of what I was doing back in 08, as I was doing uh, creative deals, I was doing lease options in Texas and it was lease, it was legal back then. Um, and I partnered up with a, uh, a real estate investor that actually went public, but I didn't like the way he was doing business. So I dropped that partnership, sold my construction business, and I moved to Colorado. 
um, where I started doing project managing for new construction apartments. And so I had about 15 projects that I would do all at once. And I was kind of bored doing the same thing every day. And I started doing real estate classes, trying to get into, into real estate all over again and did a lot of the hard stuff. I, I mean, I spent you know, 30, 40, $50,000 on courses back then, didn't find anything that really jived with me, um, kept going. And then we kind of moved to North Carolina to build our dream home, my wife and I, and I built our dream home by myself, took me three years. And during the process, I started taking real estate courses again. Cool. So um, how'd you get into sub two? I mean, we, you and I met through sub two, Pace Morby's community. Um, we haven't met personally yet, but we've, we've, you know, we talked on the phone, we've been on Zooms. Um, but how did you come across Pace? Was it, was it his YouTube? Was it Bigger Pockets? He's on a number of platforms. How were you in, did somebody tell you about it? Yeah, so the way I ran into the Paces group is I was actually doing a lot of creative financing already through another mentor. I, I liked the the whole concept behind it, and I did a deal, a couple of deals while in that program, but the community wasn't there, and I was looking for a, a better and bigger community, one to kind of have um, the support and everything to go along with it. Came across um, Paces group. Uh, probably on a Facebook ad or something like that. And I, and I started going into it and I joined pretty much all in. They've been all in ever since. And I'm in quite a few sub two communities and I love reaching out and networking with people, showing, uh, show them how to do stuff. Um, you know, pointing in the right direction, shading. We uh, trade properties a lot um, with some of the people that I work with. So. Well, you know, and let's, let's kind of look, let that segue us into your topic today as far as you're helping people and things like that. Uh, your topic is AI today, and amongst other things. Um, how did, how did you know, one, what impact today does AI have on the real estate industry? And in addition to that, um, you know, not only what impact does it have, but I mean, how many ways is it applicable to benefit one's business in real estate? Yeah. So when you're first starting out in real estate, AI can impact tremendously. And it all starts with your list. Um, so whether you're pulling a list, calling a list, texting, um, it's not, texting is really not much applicable anymore, especially with the new ATPs and the, um, the new regulations going on, but you can still use it. Um, but using AI to just basically pull all the data together and actually give you you know, everything you need all in a matter of 10 seconds, pretty much. It just pulls everything together for you. Nice and neat. It saves hours and hours of research and, and just streams line your whole front end process. You know, it's crazy. I mean, you make me feel like a, like a dinosaur, you know, uh, being an older guy, you know, um, in some regards, I'm really ahead of the curve because I, I know how to use Facebook. I, I know how to network. I know how to, use social media, but uh, AI is a completely new beast for me. And um, I'm looking forward to following with, with you personally on a one-to-one -one basis that we talked about the other day to learn how that can impact my business. And again, that's a matter of us networking, becoming friends. And as one network, as you guys network out there and you become friends with, with people like Justin, you know, that's what it's all about, guys. You don't go, oh, Justin, can you help me with my business? No. Build your relationships first, guys. Get to know people, and then good things will happen for you. But um, so let's get into your topic. You know, AI systems and processes. Um, why don't you start to introduce that to the group here today, and and I'm sure we'll come up with some questions for you. Yeah. So first of all, using AI um, is is a really good thing, especially when you're starting out. And you can kind of streamline and take away a lot of the expenses you have and trial and error. But there are some right ways and wrong ways that you can actually go about doing it. Um, using chat GPT is probably one of the biggest and best options you'll have out there. And whenever possible, I always recommend using GPT-4 or 4 Turbo. Um, and simply because it's able to use the internet in live time. Okay, so you do a lot of your research that way. But one of the biggest mistakes a lot of people do when using GPT or any other BARD or, or type, you know, AI type service 
is they're not reading over the information they're getting back and then also fact checking that information. So a lot of what's read out there with AI right now is based off blogs and articles. And what you want to do is ignore the blogs and articles because all that is is another company out there writing a blog about it and they're making it look um, like them as themselves are the ones that's going to have that solution for you, whether they do or not. And so you really want to focus your AI on actual facts and real live data when you're doing that search. And there's a lot of cool tools out there to help you with that live data. And that will definitely streamline the process on the front end of your business, um, whether you have a little bit of money or a lot of money to spend on your marketing to find your deals. Well, let me ask you a question because um, there's a lot I don't know. You could fill what I, what I do know you could put into a thimble and what I don't know you could put into the ocean. Um, but with all the new things coming up, and AI is one of those things, for those on the call that might not know, I'm sure some of the guys on the call that do know, we got like Mark and Andrew are young guys. They probably know about this stuff. I don't. But um, for people that are watching on YouTube right now, weeks and months down the line, as well as on the call right now, what is chat GBT? Is that what it is? What is that? Yeah, basically, it's just an open source AI. And basically, it started off as basically just a huge database of everything that was out there in the Internet. And it's a formulated algorithm that lets you search in real time in a matter of seconds, pretty much whatever you want. And basically, it's like having a human that you can interact with that has the brain of 50 billion people. Wow. Right? And so by using that leverage, that technology that just became open source just this last year, um, what well, uh, technically the end of the year before, but uh, by using that and leveraging that within your business, you have a free source or a very cheap source um, of basically infinity data that you can use for your real estate business. Everywhere from tracking your competitors to market analysis for um, how to find better leads and in, in say the Kentucky market or Tennessee market. And you base that live data off different scenarios. And then you can turn around and ask chat GPT to um, formulate different things for you, like ad creatives or ad content, social media content. Um, if you want to write a, um, an, an email out to um, your prospective uh, sellers and you want to send them a note, put in what you think that you're supposed to be sending it and then tell chat GPT that it's an expert, right? At content writing. And you want them to focus on a particular topic, which is this motivated sellers that may or may not be in a distressed situation. And you're trying to convince them that, that you are the better option and the house buying or slash yeah. selling. Yeah need and it gives you exactly what you need so does one Maybe go to a website use. to do this i mean say say i want to create a document to send out to my buyers list or you know i've got people that are registering for my group and i want to reach out to my community and and ask something or present something do i go to a website or are there websites that provide this information or we just don't go to google and put in hey you know give me some information i mean how, how does that work there's lots of free services. So if you're on a Windows, um, Mac, uh, not Windows, uh, yeah, Windows, the search bar that you have down at the bottom of your screen has a AI built into it called Bing. Wow. Um, it's tremendously useful. It has a big old B on it. Um, you can type all your stuff in there, talk to AI in real life time. And then you can also go to another website. It's chat.com openai.com join there there's a free option you get um so many questions and, and answers that you can and and talk to chat gpt and then there's a paid option so the paid option is going to be really useful if you're trying to integrate ai into your business and and integrate it in with your tools and different things like that okay that sounds great i guess a similar thing exists for the mac as well right is, is it is it are you you a PC guy as opposed to a Mac, or do you just know yeah, that so, Windows format has that? Um, Mac, I don't really know a whole lot about. As far as I know, there's no built-in AI into the search. 
Um, Chrome doesn't even really have one as well. So you can use Google. Um, Google has Bard, but Bard is uh, used to be the go-to as far as AI is concerned, but now they're kind of falling behind, especially since now GPT-4 and GPT-4 Turbo has come out. And then you can also put a lot of this AI together and build a lot of different things. Um, even on ChatGPT4, there's um, ChatGPT Explorer, but you can actually go in and build your own app inside GPT to service not only your needs, but maybe your team's needs or your business needs. And it literally walks you through step-by-step step exactly how to build this app that you're trying to build just by telling it what it is that you want to do. As you're talking, I just went into the internet and I, I put in, uh, you know, ch I went to Google and I went chat, chat GBT and it opened up a, a, a number of, of different websites. Uh, uh, OpenAI.com, chat.openai.com, chatgbt.one. So these are all different different types of websites that one can go to. There's one Q O R A O R A Quora. Uh, so there's a number of websites that one would go to to acquire this kind of service. Yeah. Some some are better than others. OpenAI and chat. Open AI are basically the same thing. They're just going to take you to two different platforms. So one's going to be like the free version and one's going to be a paid version. Okay, Liam, we got a question here from the audience or participate participants. I'm going to bring somebody on with us. Mike McKenna, you are on with Justin Lee. What's your question? Yeah, thanks for uh thanks for coming in, Justin, and talking to us about this. Uh I'm really interested in the AI. I've used a little bit. Uh, I formed my uh company name through AI, just through chat, chat GBT, just getting ideas. And I've done some emails, and uh, formulated some text and stuff through it. Um, I guess I'm actually on version 3.5, so I guess I'm a little bit behind. But um, I understood that the data available through like chat GBT was, was like old data, was like a year or two old. Is that not true anymore or is that? Yeah, so 3.5 was on 2022 data, sometimes even 21, depending on what you're going for. So 3.5 is really good for general use case, not really good for a lot of research case, but that's where GP, GP, uh, GPT-4 and Turbo come in handy because you can actually attach different apps to there through ChatGPT. And you can actually connect to the internet in live time and do your research there. So you can tell it to pull information from certain sites like Zillow or Redfin or Realtor.com and read live data from those sites as long as they don't require a membership to get that data. And that data is free. You're able to get that information in the masses in a matter of seconds. Cool. That's very cool. So I guess I need to update <laughs> what I'm working with. All right. Well, thank you. Kirill, you are on with Justin Lee. What's your question? Uh, hi, Justin. Thank you uh, for this um, presentation. And I have a question about your website. Uh, do you, I mean, uh, chat on your website about Beth. Is it uh, the AI tool or it's kind of, what is it? Yeah, so that's going to be one of the top AIs you can get out on the market right now. So right now, it's just available to our platform. Mm. But here in the next 15 days, we are releasing that out to the public where I can put it on anybody's platform, on anybody's site, no matter what platform they're on. Mm. So that is the latest in technology. We can connect to um, live data in real time. So all we have to do is tell it what information we want, and Beth is able to read it. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Caesar, you are on with Justin Lee. What's your question? Hi, Justin. Uh, thanks for coming in and sharing this stuff with us. Uh, um, unlike JJ, uh, you know, new to AI, but uh, have used a, used it a little bit uh, just for copyright stuff. But um, the, uh, I guess, tips and tricks that you use, you know, for um, finding leads and maybe applying it specifically to your business. Uh, do you um, 
Do you give any type of uh, stuff on any of your YouTube channels on how to do stuff like that? Um, we have not in the path, just because I have not had time, but uh, that's one of my goals for this year is to make more videos to show people how to do things. We've been focusing really heavily on building our AI within our system. And uh, so, yeah, going forward this year, um, basically, if you send me a message on something you want to know how to do, I'll make a video on it. Okay, sounds good. Brady Hales, you are on with Justin Lee. What's your question? Hey, Justin. So I was curious, uh, like, so I know a, a big, uh, maybe you call it a problem or, or maybe a difficulty with with real, real estate investing is getting better data when you're skip tracing. I was wondering, can AI be used to get better quality skip trace data as well as do it much cheaper? Yeah, absolutely. So there's lots of platforms out there already that are already utilizing AI into their systems. And what you want to look for is the Plensity uh, uh, AI. Basically, what they're doing is they're looking for motivation and they're using AI to do it. And usually the score is between one and a thousand. What you want to do is look for something around 600 and up. And that way you're not wasting your your time with anything below the 600 mark because they're not going to be that interested. It's going to be on the same level as calling up 60 people and basically one of them answering the phone. That's the difference between the 600 mark and, and lower. So when you're using that score, um, you can just follow the 600 rule as, as long as you're going 600 and up then you're good to go on there. Cool. You said it was called Plensity score? It's a it's, uh, pro Plensity. Pro Plensity. Okay. Cool. Thank you. I'll look into it. All right, George. I think we got you going here, brother. What's your question? Okay. Fascinating topic. Um, I have, uh, I think, a, a couple questions. How are you able to determine whether you're actually using ChatGBT 4 or 4 Turbo? How do you know what you're using? And then my second question is, can you use the chat GPT to pull lists like from LLS data? I guess that's a membership platform, so you wouldn't be able to do that. But what about from public records? Can you use it to pull data from there? Um, it, it all depends. So if the public records, if you have the exact URL that you're going for, so if you're able to go to public records and the information is there without having to request it, all you have to do is give it the actual URL, including all the, the back half of it as well. So everything after the forward slash, okay? Give it that exact URL that you're one to, to scrape, basically, and it will do the trick. Now, as far as actually pulling data, um, you have to be careful with what you're doing because sometimes the data that it is reading is not good data. So just always double check that you're actually going and, and compare the information. Once you see the information is good to go, you're in the clear. Now, how do you know what you're what chat GBT you're using? How do you know what you're using? There's a, a settings tab in the, the, the lower um, left hand side of the chat GBT. And you're gonna go in there and then you're gonna go to the settings. Also, when you're in the chat, there's a little icon at the very top um, part of the screen that has a little pop, uh, little pop down. 3.5 is going to be the default, and then you can choose from 4.0 or the 4.0 Turbo. Gotcha. My last question, and I'm sorry, my last question is, how exactly are you using uh, AI in your business, and how has it helped you improve? Yeah, so in a number of different ways. This, this can work for anybody that's starting off um, I use a lot of AI to post social media posts for me automatically, along with a lot of uh, creatives and content to go along with that. Um, so I set up one time and it's completely done. Um, if anybody wants to know how to do that, I can more than happy to show you. I'll create a video and let you know how to do it and, uh, and, and kind of go from there. 
Also, on the other aspect of that, um, I use chat, I use AI in our business to basically run our business. So I don't have to have as many people working for me. Um, so that's one of the things that benefited me the most when I started scaling up because I didn't want to have a lot of people working in my business and, and to pay those extra people. So now I have AI built into my systems and processes to basically take care of tasks for me automatically. That's going to become more when you start doing one or two deals um, and up because that does have a cost involved um, with that. But you can also do use AI to leverage your uh, your research on how you write emails and how you write out correspondences, um, topics to discuss with your sellers, read contracts over for you automatically if you want, um, and actually you can uh, revamp contracts to sound more legit. And it's not legal per se because it's not a lawyer, but you can pull the document yourself. You can write it out and you can send it to your normal closing attorney that you normally use. And most of the time they'll check it off real quick and they won't charge anything for it as long as you're closing deals with them. Gotcha. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. All right, George, over and out. When you got into AI, how did you find out about this thing? I mean, I remember, I remember, gosh, 20 years ago, I was working for Lowe's Home Improvement and computers were just starting to become the, the common thing. And some young man that I was working with started talking about something named Google. And he said, you can look up anything you want on Google. And of course, Google has just exploded. AI seems to be the modern version of that, that people are hearing about it. But, I mean, how did you hear about it and how did you learn about it? Because obviously, you know quite a bit about it today. Yeah, so I, I do a lot of research in, in what I do, um, simply because I'm always trying to stay top of the line with what I do in marketing, but not also marketing, but how it's going to affect my real estate business as well. So I... I wanted something where I could set up my real estate business in order to basically run itself. I just have to go to closings pretty much. And so that's kind of what we built out. And, and we have, you know, the systems and processes to go along with that. But how I first came into it was basically looking for creative ways to streamline different things. And then back in the early January of last year is when I ran into it for the first time. And I believe I was talking with um, Bill Allen and um, he was working on something that he was doing within his business and how they were using it to lever uh, leverage um, the way they basically run their content. And then from there, it just became a big snowball effect. And then I just kept going and going and going and going. What I've realized over the fact of the last six months or so, AI is constantly changing. So you can't really set yourself on one particular platform and stick with it because guarantee in about two or three months, something bigger and better is going to take its place unless you're going with something that's actually built out and someone that's actually built the systems themselves and that are doing the constant updates to stay on top. So just be careful what you're picking out there. Graham Norris, you're on with Justin Lee. What's your question? Yeah, thank you, Justin. I'm fascinated with AI itself and anything new in technology. Uh, one thing I know, I don't like a cold call, uh, at least from a robot. So what, 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 and I don't think I'm alone. So looking down um, Future Road, as it were, I can see them legislating against all this sort of stuff, you know? Uh, what, what's your reaction to that? And how do you think AI will skirt around that issue, which is surely inevitable, because who likes to be talking to a robot, right? Yeah, so there's a very thin line on that topic right now, whether it's legal or not legal. And it ha has to do with um, uh, trickery. Okay, so you don't want to trick people that you're going into a conversation with. So as long as you're letting them know right up front, you know, what it is that you're doing, 
AI can go a long way. And as long as the response is not created beforehand and it's done in real time, I think that's where the fine line is going to be moving forward legally with AI calling. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, you've got a voice, sounds real. Uh, AI can text back and forth as well, right? They, someone could text to you and your AI will take care of the texting in response. Yeah, pretty much. So AI is a constantly learning thing. So I, I know a lot of you have probably been messaging me back and forth while I'm on Zoom here. Um, just to let you know, I am not the one having conversations with you. That's my AI, Beth. <laughs> Um, just to let you know, so there are some trainings involved because she's not really handled for like the one-on-one -on -one personal conversations. It's more the data that we're giving her. And the more data we have, um, the better she can respond. So personal messages is what, you know, she has trouble with the most. And so what we'll do is we'll actually take these conversations that you guys are having with, with Beth in real time, and we train her on how to respond to different scenarios. And we give her keywords, like when somebody says hospital or anything else, we divert we divert um, the Q&A a different direction so we're not going down that emotional path. And uh, so, yeah, AI is going a, a totally different way and it's going to help your business in every way, shape, and form. That's, that is awesome. I'm excited to, to use it myself. I know... Some of my friends have used it for documents and writing things and putting content together. Um, you know, obviously it's the way of the future. And, uh, you know, I've heard about some of the issues with it. Um, you know, as Graham alluded to you talking to a computer and, and I hear sometimes with, I don't know if it's AI, but where, where technology is able to really duplicate somebody's voice and you think you're actually talking to the person, but you're not. Is yeah, that, so is that AI also. Yeah, so not only can it duplicate the voice, but it can actually duplicate the um, the actual person themselves. So um, I've created lots of videos um, out there. I use them a lot for recreating our knowledge base in some of our education platforms that we have. But it's not me doing the videos in the conversation. I use AI for it, and there's really cool tools out there that can do that for you. And the top of the line, the biggest platform out there right now that's going to change the industry is called HeyGen. And that right there is going to be your AI avatar. And uh, coming at the end of this, this month, HeyGen is going to release an avatar that you can place inside of Zoom calls to take your place if you wanted to. Oh, I yeah, somebody was trying to get onto the call and, and record it. And that was probably somebody's AI. Would you imagine that's what that was? Um, no, it was probably their Zoom AI was probably clicking in, but they were they were trying to record also, um, not realizing that you have to have admin permissions to record on Zoom. Yeah, and I as a you know those that know that we record the call ourselves and we put it up on YouTube, so that's kind of how we prefer to keep it, keep a little handle on that herself. It seems so like I'll give everybody a quick little tip here. Um, if you're wanting to record certain sections on Zoom calls, like you're trying to get little snippets, use Loom. Especially if you have two windows going, so two different screens, you can put whatever you're trying to record on one screen, use Loom to record that screen, and then just shut it off when you're done. Wow. And now Loom, Loom is that like Loom.com, L-O-O-M? It is, yes. Yeah, we'll have to, boy, you, you, you got some great stuff here. You know, it it is very obvious that AI, we're only scratching the surface of what it can do. And, you know, with all the different tasks, you know, Pace talks about there's so many different things we can specialize in in real estate, uh, acquisitions, funding, short sales, uh, creative finance, multifamily, short-term rentals, long-term rentals. Uh, there's so many different avenues that AI will, as a result, have so many applications. And uh, I don't think we've really, really scratched the surface of how we can benefit by that. But obviously, it's important to, you know, be up to date with things. If not, you know, develop relationships with people like yourself that really, really know what they're doing. Um, Justin, I'm going to thank you for being on today. We're going to get the breakout rooms going here. But 
I wanted to ask you two questions before we we pull away. Um, if people want to reach out to you, what's the best way to contact you if they have any questions now or, or weeks down the line off of YouTube? Yeah, so the best way to do it is you can actually scan here. I've got all my information here, all the YouTube icons, the social links. You can click on any of those. We actually have websites. You can go in there. Andrew, you are on with Jeff Finley. What's your question? Uh, I was actually, I was asking Felicia there. She said that she had purchased a CRM that uses AI. And I was asking which one is she currently using? So I know that you probably, Justin, used one as well. Which um, CRM are you using that incorporates AI? Yep. So we actually built our own CRM and we built our own AI into it. Um, there's a lot of CRMs that have AI right now out there, mm -hmm. but it's based off typical Q&A. So you have to actually give it a database to pull the answers off of with the AI that we've created inside the system that we're going to be able to pass on to other people this next month is not only Q&A based, but it actually learns from different, it will have a different response for everything that you have going on. So it's not one response for one question. It's actually able to um, contemplate what the question is and answer according to the conversation. It can change tone. It can change um, responses. And so it's a constant learning phase. And so we actually give you the ability to actually go in and change different responses according to how you feel that it should respond to. And that was, uh, what's that one called? Right now, we've got one specifically out there just for the real estate, um, the the real estate niche out there. Mm -hmm. And if you go to powerhousecams.com, um, you can get in there. We have AI attached in there as a basic model, and then we have our more stringent model that we can put in there as well. And the Beth that we use is called, uh, the AI that we use is called Beth, uh, but we actually give you the ability to name your own AI when you have access to it. Um, my last question to you is going to be, you know, my group's a networking group. I'm always talking about networking, the importance of that. Um, from your standpoint, being a successful investor, um, using automation, you know, uh, AI and, and and being so up to date with things you know, of a technology basis, you know all these education platforms, Astro, Sub Two, you know all these different programs. Bill Allen, seven figure investor. We have new investors coming in every day. Some are experienced, some are inexperienced, but they're all coming to the social media platform of Facebook groups for these communities. A lot of people are coming in to study just the curriculum. And some are taking into account the importance of networking. They're just in the Facebook group to mingle, so to speak. From your standpoint, what is the importance of networking to the success of someone's business? And what is the you know importance of possibly joining a group like mine? Yeah, so networking, I would say, is probably going to be huge. One of the biggest reasons I go to events is to network. It's not really about the education that goes into there. They are very powerful as far as educating yourself, but I feel networking is probably one of the most impactful things that you can do for your business. It, it has tremendous value to everything that you do and everything you might want to do in the future. You never know who has something that you want unless you meet them first. Exactly, exactly. If you guys are watching on YouTube right now, please like Justin's video presentation please put your comments down what your take takeaways were what you found valuable we'd love to get your your feedback so we can bring you you know better content as time goes by again if you want to get a hold of justin you know go go check out his link up here in the corner uh go scan his qr code you'll have all of his information if you want to reach me go to my website jjazizen.com please click the register now button register for my group we'll get you on these zoom calls um, again, I want to thank everybody for being here. Justin, thank you for being here. Uh, Justin, hang on. You guys on the call, hang on. I'm going to go to breakout rooms. Everybody else watching right now out there in the YouTube world, uh, thank you so much for joining us. And Justin, we'll see them um, in the social media world, right? Absolutely. I can't wait to meet everyone. See you guys later. Thank you for joining us.